Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we will look a bit at how learning is studied in biology and in psychology. Learning is an important topic in both biology and psychology, but historically each has focused on somewhat different findings and questions. For example, take pigeons. The psychologist sees pigeons primarily as convenient laboratory animals. They are smart enough to learn many different things, easy to keep, and do not cost much. Biologists studying learning, on the other hand, would be interested mainly in what a pigeon learns in its natural environment, which may be different from what psychologists teach it in the lab. Biologists would also be interested in differences between pigeon species. There are more than 300 species in the pigeon family, like the Nicobar pigeon, the Victoria crown pigeon, or the yellow-footed green pigeon. Biologists are interested in comparing them and finding differences that make sense given their different environments. For example, pigeon species that feed on seeds might learn differently than species that feed on fruit. Let's look now at some other differences, starting with psychology. Psychologists tended to emphasize learned behavior over innate behavior and used to think that most animals, or at least mammals and birds, learn in similar ways. This stance makes it legitimate to use animal learning as an experimental model of human learning. For example, one can develop a rat model of addiction of, or overeating in order to understand better these human ailments. Psychologists mainly work in the lab. Although animal learning has evolved to learn about an animal's natural environment, psychologists think that there are some universal characteristics of learning that can be studied effectively in a laboratory. In summary, the learning psychologist is primarily interested in studying learning in itself and less in the particular animal that does the learning. Let's now look at biology. The main idea here is that learning as practically anything about living things has evolved to help animals survive. Learning must be useful in the animal's natural environment, and what an animal learns in nature is the biologist's primary interest. This point of view leads naturally to the idea that different animals may have different learning abilities if they have to learn about different things. For example, the walrus and the crested tit live in very different environments, and it would not surprise the biologists if their learning ability were best fit for different tasks. Traditionally, biologists have also stressed that much of behavior is at least in part programmed genetically, as we have seen uh, before. Learning should make no exception. In later lessons, we will see many examples of how the genes can influence learning and behavior. In summary, a biologist studying learning is primarily interested in how learning functions to help an animal's survival. To understand this, one needs to study the animal in its natural environment. In this course, we will be open-minded and use all knowledge about learning that has come from studying learning, both in biology and in psychology. We will adopt the biologist's point of view that learning must make sense in an animal's environment, at least for the most part. This makes it easier to interpret learning phenomena. For example, we will see in a later lesson that animals learn more easily about certain stimuli than about others, and that this depends on what is more useful in natural environments. At the same time, we will mainly refer to laboratory experiments rather than studies in nature. The reason is that the laboratory enables us great precision. We can control exactly what an animal sees or hears, what it eats or drinks, and how its behavior changes during learning. Our working hypothesis will be that learning mechanisms are general, as claimed traditionally by psychologists, that is, they are similar across the species, but also that they are tuned to each species' needs, as claimed traditionally by biologists. This can be a bit vague at this point, but it will make sense later. This lesson is over. Here are some suggestions on what to study next. Happy learning to everyone.